Hello there, it's Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's card making video, I'm playing with mixed media. Is it for card making? Well, they're just artworks composed from a combination of different media or materials, which is exactly what I'm gonna do to make these two happy new baby cards. So let's jump in and you tell me what you think if mixed media is for card making. So I'm starting out with this vertical lines stencil from Heffy Doodle. I'm going to tape a piece of cardstock to the back of this that measures four and three fourths by four and three fourths because it's going to go on a five by five card. So once that's taped in place, I am going to stencil this the easiest way I think, which is with some distress oxide sprays. So I would consider this a mixed media type of material. It's a spray, like card making, you normally think of stamps, ink, and paper. So this is a form of ink, but it's like a little different, right? So I did the top half with mustard seed, or the top third, and then I'm gonna kind of mask that off with a dry baby wipe and bring in some salt water taffy for the middle, loving that new color. And then I'll lightly cover that and do the bottom with worn lipstick. Um, I'm just kind of going for like an ombre look and trying to use some different colors that I don't know feel kind of sunset like so there we have it now there's ink that builds up on the stencil there's not as much on this one because I did use that baby wipe but it is a great idea to take a second piece of cardstock and pick up that ink this one doesn't have too much going on but it's still usable for something I think so here we have our background that we're going to use on our first card and for my sentiment I am using this happy new baby jumbo die cut I have die cut it from a gel press print now for card number two I am going to show you the gel press print making process um, this one I die cut from a print I already had on hand because I have a ton of them so I uh, glued that down to its shadow die cut which I cut from white cardstock and I'm popping that up in the center of my background panel okay we're moving on to the stamping I am using this two by two stamp set from Heffy Doodle it's two by two like two animals going together like on an arc <laughs> there is an arc die set they have you can pair with this stamp set which can also be made into a barn it's the coolest set so I'm going to stamp these on some alcohol friendly cardstock with some black ink and then we're going to do some Copic coloring which is a different kind of ink right it's alcohol ink so you're going to get a lot different look than you would with oxide ink and so it's a different medium that we're using <laughs> All right, so I'm using some Y markers here, and at first I thought I would keep this giraffe like really light in color. I kind of was wanting it to match a certain giraffe that I have. My very first stuffed animal ever was a giraffe. This giraffe winds up, plays music, and its neck moves around, or at least it used to. It was my very first stuffed animal, so, you know. It's getting up there in years. We won't say how many years because then we're going to talk about how many years I am. And it's getting up there. So I uh, decided to go ahead and color this a little bit darker to better match like the background of my card. And I just felt like he, he was wanting to be golden today. So that's what my draft is. I'm doing very simple Copic coloring, especially on the browns here. I'm using some E27 and E25. Um, and then on the main four or the hair, I'm using E23, I believe. So um, I just like to color simple. That's what makes me happy. If you are really into all of the blending and shading and shadowing and highlighting, you should do that. <laughs> but I, this is what makes me happy, so that's what I do. Next, I am adding some white highlights with my Jelly Roll pen and cleaned up a little bit of the marker that I got outside the lines, and now he is ready to go. I'm gonna color the leaves with the same yellow markers, and then for my bird that I decided to add at the last minute, I brought in some R markers, so R22 for my darkest, R21 for my midtone and R02, which kind of takes these colors to a corally level. I thought it went really well with the saltwater taffy, so that's what I decided to do for my bird and added a little bit 
of the yellow to that as well. And now it's time to die cut out all of the things. If you have not seen this mini baby adorable die cut machine before, I have to show it to you. It sits right on my desk and I can bring it onto my glass mat to use it. It's so tiny and yet it has big enough plates I can die cut out almost anything except, you know, the really large ones, but it's just there and it doesn't take up so much room that I can't have it out when all the crafty things like completely take over my desk. I can still use it. I love that. All right, so now I am adding my die cuts, popping them up with some foam squares, and they overlap the sentiment a little bit, which I think is really fun. And then I have my leaves that I'm going to add to the corners just to kind of draw your eye into the center, give it a little bit more of that like safari feel that I want when I think of giraffes. I I just love them. They're my favorite animal. I have even got to feed one in real life. So I love them. I had to make a card like this with a baby giraffe on it. I also got my daughter's giraffes as their first stuffed animal when they were born. So it's kind of special to me. Now I am adding some hearts here. These are from the Trinity Stamps Shop and they have a little bit of translucency to them and I love them so much. I put three more in the other corner, but you can see they're kind of picking up the colors that are behind them and I love it. Okay, let's move on to card number two. Again, I'm using Distress Oxide Spray to spray on my stencil that was mowed lawn, I believe, or no, I think it was Rustic Wilderness, actually, and then I have some Distress Oxide Mica Spray. So I have the two together, which is gonna give me a little bit of shimmer on there. Now this stencil had a lot more ink on it because I didn't use any baby wipe or anything like that for masking. So I'm gonna press this down onto a second sheet of paper and that is going to give me a really good background that I am going to use on this next card. So there you can see the difference between the two, both very usable for anything you wanna make. So now I'm going to trim this down again so it is four and three fourths by four and three fourths. And I thought I would just show you this in case you're kind of new to paper cutting or paper crafting. You want to see like how the tools work and all of that. So that is the background I'm using. And I thought also I would show you a part of my collection of backgrounds. Some of these are watercolor, ink smushing, gel press, even um, like hot foiling, but I have so much. I have another basket that's bigger, like it has eight and a half by 11 sheets in it. So I decided I'm gonna go ahead and make a gel press print because I wanted something specific for card number two that I didn't really have in my stash. So I am using gray and black acrylic paint. This is a heavy body paint. You can see I just put a few dots there on my little gel press and I'm brayering that to mix it up and spread it around on my gel press. And I need a little piece of cardstock here to clean off my brayer so that I don't waste that paint over there. I'm going to use that. And then I'm bringing in this bag that had lemons in it. <laughs> once upon a time and I'm using that to create texture so I'm going to press down with a piece of cardstock and pick up any paint that's going to come through there now that one was okay um, but I like to just I like to make a lot of backgrounds here so I did a second one and I liked that one too um, but this is really where it gets like delicious right here uh, can you say that about paper I do and by the way, this is a really fun mixed media thing to do, is make your own backgrounds with gel press prints. And you can use these for your cards, which I'm gonna use today. Um, I think it is one of my most favorite things to do in my craft room. I feel so artsy when I do gel press prints, you know? All right, so I just spread out the ink that was already there. Now I'm going to add a few drops of some gray paint, that same gray paint that I had before, and really spread this around onto my gel press. And then I'm going to, clean off my brayer and bring in a piece of cardstock. This time I actually brought in a half sheet of paper. This is going to pick up a lot of what was left on the gel press and it looks so amazing. I decided to bring in that print that didn't have very much on it and pick up a little bit more for a layered look, but there is still paint on there, believe it or not. So I'm putting, again, very small amount of paint and I'm going to do a very thin layer of paint all over this. And then I'll take the other half sheet of paper and press that down. But this time I'm going to leave it on here until it dries. So I walk 
walked away, it's been about five minutes or so, and then I'm gonna come back and just peel that off. Now you can see it's kind of hard to peel off. It's really stuck to that. That is because the paint is dry. And I, you can see there are colors on this paper that I did not put on that gel press today. It's picking up paint from the last time I used this gel press. So now let's just take a look at all the cool prints we made. I love these and I will definitely be using them. I, for this card, I'm going to use the very last print that we made. So I'm going to die cut out the happy new baby from this. And um, you might seem like this is weird to be using for happy new baby, right? <laughs> but I want to use a uh, rhinoceros on this card. So I feel like this kind of gives you that like leathery rhinocerosy look, right? What do you think? <laughs> I glued this down to a white piece die cut the same as a shadow layer and then that's going to be glued down to um, the full shadow layer uh, in gray cardstock. I'm going to pop that up onto my background. I like the more subtle look of that background with that really gray and kind of heavy sentiment there in the middle. And now here's my little rhinoceros. I also chose the sitting down rhinoceros just as I did the giraffe because I felt like they had more of a baby-like quality to them when they're sitting down. Um, so now for the coloring, I'm using G28 as my darkest and G19 as my lightest marker. I'm doing my bird, my leaves, and you know, I'm really keeping things within the kind of green and gray look because I like things to be very matchy matchy. <laughs> I, it's just how I am. So um, here the leaves are being colored with those same two colors of markers. And then I'm going to do the same layout. When you're making multiple cards, it's really nice to kind of repeat some of the same elements you do on your first card. And then that takes some of the guesswork out of what you're going to make, you know. So now I die cut out all the things. I did not color that rhinoceros. No, you'll see what I'm going to do with that, which is paper piecing. So I'm going to stamp the same rhinoceros onto a scrap of that gel press print that I used to die cut out the words. And I kind of picked a light gray area and I'm going to stamp this down several times so I can really see the lines. And once that's dry, I am going to die cut or no, fussy cut, <laughs> fussy cut this out. Now what I'm cutting right on those lines, I really cut slow. So I sped this cutting up after this point like 800% because <laughs> I I really just take my time um, and then I am not, you know, going to be sad that I messed up. So now we can glue this over the top and you can see I did not cut out the horns. I cut them away because I want the horns to stay white. So look how cute he turned out. I'm loving it. I'm bringing in my white jelly roll pen to color his toenails so they're white. And then I will also add some white highlights to this little guy. I think it's really such a cute little critter. Like I don't have any other hippopotamus stamps. I'm pretty sure that's really just cute. Okay. For another element of mixed media. I'm bringing in some glaze and I'm coating all, all the letters in this happy new baby and it's really going to, you know, help it to be shiny and it's going to kind of in intensify the paint that's under there and that's going to give it a little bit of contrast between the rhinoceros and the letters. So I went ahead and did this, but you know, my card's not done and I have all this wet glaze on there, which I usually do the glaze as a very last thing, but I got too excited. So I went for it. So now I just have to be careful, right? Let's see if I can do that or not. So I'm adding on my bird, my rhinoceros. I glued down those leaves and now I'm gluing this down to my five by five card. So far, so good. Now let's add some hearts, right? Just like we did on card number one and it's going pretty good. I am being careful. I'm so proud of myself until now. Listen in while I make this card. Mm. Ah, I dropped it in the glaze. Uh, oh, my word. Okay. Ooh. Ah. This rogue heart. What is happening? The stresses of card making. Oh, golly. <laughs> I thought you guys might enjoy just 
being right there with me in the stamp room, I'm sure these things have happened to you. I was able to clean the glaze off the heart and use it anyway. The glaze was not ruined. All was fine. But man, it was a stressful moment for sure. So there is card number one. If you're interested in these little hearts and things that I'm using, I'm going to link them for you in the description box below under this video. So check that out if you're interested. And now here are the finished cards. You can see what that glaze looks like dried. It's so shiny. And um, I hope that you agree with me that mixed media is totally for card making. And I hope that you get a little bit inky, a little bit messy and cut loose. Have some fun with your card making today. Thank you so much for visiting me. I love sharing my creations with you. And my hope is that you're leaving here inspired. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you very soon on the next video. Happy stamping. Bye.